Yeah, I'm Mark Engstrom. I'm with the Heartland Classics Group. We're having an old boat show at Margaritaville today. We are uh, sponsored by Big Thunder Marine. Uh, about three years ago, we started having these shows. We're bringing these boats back to the lake, trying to find, meet all the people we can that have old boats and reach out to us. We have a website. It's called heartlandclassics.org. And you can go out to that and you can find all kinds of information about us and our group. And, uh, you know, if you feel like joining, join. If not, the website's totally accessible. We've got about 30 boats here today. We've got 10 up on shore. And uh, this one's one of mine. This is a 64 Lyman hardtop convertible. It was a, a fishing boat on Lake Erie. And uh, I figured if it would hold the, the water on Great Lakes, that it would be able just fine on Lotto. And it's, it's been a great boat now for two seasons here. So it sits on a lift on the 10 mile marker. Very nice. But we welcome everybody to come out and go to the website and contact us, especially if you have an old boat and you want to bring it down to one of these events. So, so a little bit more about the boat. Um, Lyman, they were they made a lot of these. Lyman, boats. they made them in Sandusky, Ohio. You know, they made them in the, the 30s, I think, through the 70s. Uh, this, a lot of them were made for fishing out of. This one was fished out of. Uh, they just really handle the water well. They're all wood. They have a really deep deep hole. In fact, below the water line is probably three more feet and the plug for the boat where you drain the water is in the front of the boat, not the back because the whole boat's designed to plow through the wakes. It will never sit up on top of and plane. Hmm. So, it's 25 foot. It's got a 327 Gray Marine engine in it. What they had in a Rambler in 1964 would have been what they had put in this only marine it, marineized it. So, sliding hard top, which was a feature they ordered. I've got the build sheet. It talks all about how it's put together, so it's a fun boat. Come next year if you didn't this year. 1955 Chris Crafts Commander, 42 foot. Uh, it's got the original Chrysler Hemi motors in it, 331s. It was on the, uh, brought it down from St. Paul, Minnesota. It had, it had been on the Mississippi River for 26 years and the same slip up there. Brought it down to Lake of the Ozarks in 2003. Um, have done work to keep it maintained and and more. Um, Al has done a lot of the work on this boat, most of the work on this boat, and uh, just a cool old boat. Yeah. Al, you were talking about the motors on it. Can, yeah, you, can you just tell us a little bit what's what's inside of it? The 331 Hemi's were built and designed basically as an industrial continuous running motor, and so it left us a lot of longevity to work with. They had to have the heads off, the cylinder heads off, but other than that, everything on the lower end is original. The hull had to have some wood planks replaced. And uh, in my shipwright career, this system where they use epoxy barrier coat on wood and then bottom paint on that really adds to the longevity of the hulls when they're, you know, asking for tender, loving care. So that's kind of it. And I did the top sides in the water. She's a little better off either in or near the water than ever hauled so she doesn't dry out. And that's, one emphasis I put for wood boat owners is if you can keep them on a lift above the water under a metal roof, they'll last a lot longer than if they're garage stored with the heat and they can dry out. That's something from a wood boat building career that I had second year high school and then to Greeley Shipyard in Chicago and then to a company on the west coast that built 65 to 100 all wood. So you learn a lot about wood. And that's due to, I guess, the swelling and just can span, or, uh, can you, you understand that wood has a certain limit and the age of it can cycle. Some pretty fair extremes, but if we all think of the wood cellular structure as being a straw, and that straw gets weak with age, and the last thing you want it to do is go through extreme and just find an environment with enough humidity like we have here in Lake of the Ozarks that you can seal it up to hold this moisture and probably go on for another 30 years if caught right and, and sealed up well enough. 
When it comes to the, the design of this boat, you were talking about the lines in, in the cabin down below and kind of just how it, it looks from up here at, at the captain's home. These are displacement hulls that were kind of Navy inspired World War II. These lines are off of that same drawing scale that you might say, put in a different proportion, but they can take on tremendous weight and still achieve some pretty decent speeds. So having the engines that um, can propel it up to have a solid enough bottom that when you go into a plane, the bottom will carry it without leakage or, let's say, fatigue. This boat didn't come with planking seams, and I chose to cut those in with a saw and a router. This was all done in the water. Quite a challenge, but there's that respect of keeping the water as a temperature sink and the humidity to where the boat never gets the extreme of dry out. Anybody storing a boat has a big uh, issue with the environment they store it in and on a lift in the water, regardless year round for a plank mahogany boat, yeah. really turns out to be the way to treat it. Yeah. I have to build special bunks for these bottoms to be able to support more wood and pressure for them to stay the amount of time they do on a lift. But that's all part of being a retired shipwright and under a boat you, you build a, a bunk that's kind of looks like a propeller blade when it's laminated against the bottom of the boat and then introduced to the lift to make contact to the bottom. We have to think those bottoms spend most of their life on the lift waiting for you to put them in the water or take them out. So it's really a, a thing to have a system together for old folks in a lot of different directions. Yeah. Can you talk about, you got the theme going on here uh, throughout the whole boat. It's a 1955 boat, so it's it's got all 55 uh, Appliances downstairs, uh, coffee pots, bread box, uh, cameras, magazines, calendars. Uh, keep it as retro as it used to be. Just a cool boat. Yeah, very cool. Uh, my name is Kyle Stansberry. I live in Columbia, Missouri, and uh, this is my 1961 Owens. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was originally owned by my uncle. Uh, he sold my dad, and my dad had given up on it, and then uh, I bought it from my dad, and uh, then we restored it together. So it's really still both of our boats because we both did the work on it. Um, had to take her down to bare wood, uh, replace some dry rot, and patch a hole in her, and. Uh, Rebuilt the uh, engine over the winter, is got her seaworthy, and now she runs and now she floats as well, which is the two most important parts. <laughs> Uh, my name is Scott Wallace and uh, my parents have owned the boat since 1979 and uh, I, used to, I grew up water skiing behind it and it worked great as a preteen but as I, uh, I grew in size, became a high schooler, the boat kind of just had trouble keeping up with the skiing and uh, my dad was kind of a horsepower uh, enthusiast and uh, not having enough horsepower was not an option. So he uh, they originally had a uh, four-cylinder, inline four-cylinder, roughly 120 through horse, I think is what it was. And uh, he had a small block Chevy V8 sitting in the garage, and he he felt confident that that V8 would bolt right in there. So that winter, he uh, pulled the boat out, and that same day, the motor came out, and the, the new motor started going back in. And so from there on out, we've had the V8 into it, and it's been a wild ride ever since then so going out tearing up the lakes having fun finding races uh, roughly in the late 80s he parked it beside his house and covered it up really well but that winter he uh, started getting a little going downhill on health and the boat sat beside the house for roughly 25 to 30 years 
and trees grew up around it and uh, you could barely even see that there was a boat in there and uh, roughly about seven years ago their health took even a more of a turn and they had to sell the house and move into assisted living and uh, while we were moving stuff out my dad asked me he goes he goes will you uh, cut those trees off away from that boat and uh, haul that to the dump and so I spent the day cutting the trees down and tires were rotted and out of air and got that all situated and by the time I got to the dump with it the gates were closed and uh, the dump was closed so I turned around took it back to the house and my brother was with me and uh, he came up with that he goes well let's uncover it and just see if there's anything worthy of uh, saving on the boat and we uncovered it and uh, we were very pleased to see that actually my dad had started the restoration and the paint job that you see on it is actually the paint job that he had done in uh, roughly the uh, uh, late 80s and uh, I was able to buff that out, get that good looking good. And, uh, that's amazing that they were closed. That was, that was, that was a that, good, that's that, a miracle. That saved the boat. 1966. And, uh, roughly, uh, I took about seven years working on to it. Got it to this state just recently and uh, made a trip back to uh, northern Michigan with it. Took my daughter and son and we went back and uh, we took my dad for a ride in it. That is awesome. And, uh, That's an awesome story, man. He uh, he was on cloud nine riding it, and I have to say I was too. That is awesome. So uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. That's that's a, that's an amazing story there. Uh, it's a great looking boat too. I mean, like you said, I mean you've you've had it your whole life, been around it. It's got way more memories than probably anybody could even worth worth yeah, any kind right. of. Work on any kind of money or anything like that. Would you like to hear it run? Oh yeah, I would love to. That would be awesome. I gotta go get the keys though. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Be right back. Yeah. Fun. Okay, my name is Greg Carney. I'm from Moberly, Missouri. Uh, the boat was built in 1981 in Columbia, Missouri. The brand name is called a Mako Shark. And the main thing they did was build uh, a lot of jet boats. A lot of them went to St. Louis. And a couple, of, a friend of mine and I talked him into building some outboards. And he let us modify the molds, help with the layup, I helped lay the glass. Um, we modified the molds to add a pad for, for speed and, and did a couple of light layup uh, outboards, kind of in the tradition of the Mod VP race boats. Uh, this hull, the bare hull weighs about 650 pounds. The fastest I've ever had it is uh, about 92 miles an hour. So it, uh, it runs kind of an old survivor from the 80s. The engine is a 1978 Formula 2.4, one of the early offshore engines, and it has a right now it has a 2.5 liter power head, which gives it about 260 horsepower. So it goes pretty good, um, fun boat. I'm an old survivor, bring it to the antique shows, just uh, let people see kind of what we did it back in the 80s. Yeah, a beautiful boat. Uh, when you were talking about, a lot of these were the inboards, right? I mean, that's why yeah. that that's why that, all that room's back there behind those seats, right? Yes. And they typically put another, like a bench seat, and then the motor is sitting right. Yeah. Yeah, the motor would be sitting right in that open spot. I have actually have more seating that goes in it. Um, this is kind of the, the fun setup. I'll, it'll seat about six people when I put all the seats in it if we if we want to. It makes it a little bit more of a family boat. Very cool. So uh, obviously, kind of, I mean, building it and being a one-off like that. What, what what happened after that? I mean, were there any more 
outboards that were built like that, or were you guys kind of a one-off? So. The last I heard, the guy, this was one of the last ones. He built maybe a couple more boats, just more production-style boats. And then he quit building them and went to work for Advantage Boats in, in Arizona. And the last I heard, he was on a sailboat trying to go around the world. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, it, it's fiberglass, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, is that the fuel tank over there on the right? Is that what that... Yes, yeah, stainless fuel tanks, Russell fuel tanks. Pretty common in the V-Drive, uh, flat bottom California boat world. Uh, nothing really special, a lot of them, a lot of jet boats had them, a lot of the old V-Drive, Sangers, Hondos, that kind of boat, strike boats had them. Uh, the floor looks like a butcher block, but it really isn't. It's in cuts of balsa wood. It's a balsa quarry. That's also something that's commonly used in all kinds of boats. Probably still is used. Uh, but this, this boat, they just did a, a layer of glass over it and then flow coat it so it's kind of shiny. It looks nice rather than, we don't want carpet or anything like that. It weighs too much. Yeah, very cool. So the initial deal on this, was it, were you going for speed? I mean, is that what? Yeah, we were trying to build them as fast as we could. Just um, a couple of us were just trying to go, you know, do what we could to go fast, to have fast lake boats. So you're talking 1981, you guys get this done, built, and you're and you're running the rivers with it, or what are you running back then? Uh, mostly the small lakes uh, in central Missouri. Not, not much at Lake of the Ozarks, maybe once a year for vacation or something. Most of it was uh, Thomas Hill Lake, um, then there's uh, Mark Twain Lake up there, and then you also go to the Mississippi River. Very cool.
sailing guys and uh, I'm on the 22 Catalina and right now we've got it on autopilot and uh, I'll show you what I mean Ready? look at that that's autopilot Ozark style if it works it works right It is not death most people are afraid of. It is getting to the end of life only to realize that you never truly lived. Dan Dial. This is my wife Arla. Arla K is the name of the boat. So it's a steamboat, of course. A boiler and steam engine. The engine is actually a, a new engine, but it was built off a set of plans from 1890. It's a compound condensing engine. Compound because it has two cylinders, high pressure and low pressure cylinders. Condensing because when this you build a fire in the boiler, a little fire door down there, there's water above that. The fire heats the water, turns it into, boils it into steam. Steam comes through the pipe pipes into the engine, it goes through the engine, through the high pressure and low pressure, crossover to low pressure, and then exhausts out of the, out of the engine, it goes underneath the boat. Three-quarter copper pipe under the boat, called a condenser. And that hot steam hits that three-quarter pipe, it's cold under there in the water. It condenses back to steam, or to water. This is a, right there is a, a vacuum pump. That vacuum pump runs off the engine when the engine's running. It's, it takes that water out of that pipe and puts it in a hot well or a tank underneath that lid up there. And then on the other side of that, opposite from that uh, vacuum pump, is a feed water pump. That takes the water out of that uh, tank up there that that the vacuum pump's pumping into and pumps it back into the boiler. 
so it just circulates the water. If you never blew your whistle or never had a leak or loss of steam, you'd never have to replace any water. The big ships during the Second World War, almost all the ships had steam engines like this. The USS Texas, the old ship, big ship, built in 1913, 1914, actually has the same exact engine, just much larger. <laughs> so, uh, basically it would just come down to how much coal you have if you didn't blow the whistle. And... Yes. Yeah, and the higher the higher pressure, the more RPM your engine will run. Don't use coal. You, use wood. Yeah, you can use coal. I've used a little coal, but mostly wood all the time. Yeah. There's some of the boats. We have a club. Some of the boats are, are propane run. Some of them oil. But we like to stay with the old old original. Okay, we burn hick, uh, hardwood, hickory, or oak. That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> What would you add is if it, if it popped off? Yeah, that would. There's nothing to do that. It's only going to be So that's pumping pressure from the steam. From the steam. Steam's coming out of the boiler and into the high pressure cylinder. Running that burnt cylinder. Every time that piston pushes down, steam comes in on top of the valve, top of the cylinder, pushes the piston down. As soon as it gets to the bottom, the, the valve changes the steam flow, turns it to the bottom, and pushes that piston back up. It's called double acting, so it's power strong both ways. When the steam comes out of that first cylinder, back to the low pressure cylinder, does the same thing, then it exhausts out. This is a heat exchanger which keeps that steam hot. Then it goes underneath the boat with that green pipe. Goes in. Underneath the boat is a three inch pump, three inch four of copper. And that copper, as soon as that copper or that steam hits that cool copper, it condenses back to water. And that's a vacuum pump over there. Get back in that water that's in that pipe. Now that pipe and puts it in a tank that's underneath that lid there. I can move the lid and show you that, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, my, that's yeah, really vacuums that water, you can see it. That's coming from underneath the boat after it's turned, the steam's turned back to water. <laughs> this is called a hot well. Water needs to be about 160 degrees in there. If, I, if it's a little cool, go ahead and pour that in on there. That's good. The best thing to kill your boiler and kill your business to your boiler is to put cold water in it, of course, because you're trying to make steam. <coughs> so I need to keep that hot. I've got a valve here I can open up. That's going to pump into there. So it's a, this copper pipe goes down there and coils around. Down the bottom of that page. This puts steam through there. So you're heating the water. Yeah. yeah it's probably 80 degrees or something like that. But this will heat it up so it steam's, steam's 300 degrees, 200, 212. So that will heat that water up. Which just makes it more running more efficient. Mm -hmm.